Hello and welcome to this spotlight episode on the Pearson tanks. A quick look at lesser known aspects from the early days of steam. The Pearson tanks were a series of 424 Express tank locomotives built for the Bristol and Exeter Railway and had the second largest pairs of driving wheels in British railway history, a full 9 feet in diameter. They were designed by the engineer John Pearson, an associate of Isambard Kingdom Brunel, and he had had the unfortunate task of being the engineer in charge of Brunel's atmospheric railway in South Devon. It was a line which sucked, quite literally. The Bristol and Exeter was built between those two English cathedral cities and had been built to Brunel's broad gauge of seven feet and a quarter inches. Or, given that Brunel was half French, was fluent in French and had received his education and technical training in France, 2.14 metres, a figure derived from Pi. The Bristol and Exeter line opened in stages between 1841 and 1844 and it remained an independent company until 1876 when it merged with a Great Western. John Pearson was appointed locomotive engineer to the Bristol and Exeter Railway in 1850 and he designed a suite of eight colossal passenger tank locomotives. Its first designs for the Bristol and Exeter had been pretty standard 222 tank engines, but in 1853 he turned out these eight monstrous 424 engines. They had been built by Rothwell and Company of Bolton in deepest Lancashire. They weighed in working trim 42 tonnes, of which about 15 tonnes was taken on the driving wheels. The boiler was an impressive 10 feet 9 inches long and just over 4 feet in diameter. It contained 180 tubes. The cylinders, which projected out of the front of the curiously stubby smoke box, measured 16 and a half inches by 24 inches, working an immense crank axle. The leading and trailing wheels of the four-wheel bogies had wheels 4 feet in diameter. The wheels were all hand forged and fire welded together from individual components and for the 9 feet driving wheels this must have been one heck of a challenge to produce them. The crank axle was carried above the rather flimsy frames and supported with inside and outside bearings. Suspension was provided not with any ordinary humdrum steel leaf or volute springs but by India rubber discs and India rubber springs, a bit like Tigger, whose tops are made out of rubber and bottoms are made out of springs. In order to help the locomotives take curves, the driving wheels were blind, in other words they were flangeless. The locomotive had brakes, but these only operated on the wheels of the two bogies. Water was carried in a well tank beneath the footplate and coal in a bunker at the rear. These locomotives, from their large driving wheels, were able to reach high speeds of 60 or so miles an hour, and one of them is recorded as reaching a speed over 80 miles an hour descending Wellington Bank in Somerset. After a life of only 15 or 16 years, all eight of them were withdrawn in 1868. In their place, four new locomotives to the same wheel arrangement were built. Instead of the monstrous 9 feet diameter driving wheels, driving wheels a mere 8 feet 10 inches diameter were used and these new locomotive weighs a colossal 49 tonnes. Instead of the somewhat experimental rubber springs, steel plate springs were used to provide suspension. Like their predecessors, these tank engines were fast runners, but in July 1876, one of their number, whilst hauling the Flying Dutchman Express, came off the rails, resulting in a fatal accident. After this accident, their career as tank engines ended. The Great Western, which by then had taken over the Bristol and Exeter Railway, had them rebuilt as 422 tender engines, by substituting a pair of 4 foot 6 inches carrying wheels in place of the rear bogies. The enormous driving wheels were replaced by a pair 8 feet in diameter, and it was in this form 
that the last of the pair continued to run until the demise of Brunel's broad gauge in May 1892. So that's been a quick look at Pearson's tank engines for the Bristol and Exeter Railway. They were certainly a unique contribution to railway history, but unlike another more well-known tank engine, were perhaps not really useful engines. Which other early 19th century oddities would you like to see covered by this channel? Let me know in the comments below and let's get the conversation going. I hope you have enjoyed this video, and if you have, please show your appreciation by liking, sharing and subscribing, and see you next time on Rail Story.